I just realized I'm not really used to making intros to videos. I normally sort of just get into it. So I guess we'll just get into this one. It's a different video today, not the Man United career mode because it's FIFA 23 season. Yeah, it's coming right up. And the FIFA 23 beta has actually been released and I got my code very recently. So that's why that's been, I guess, on the back burner for the last few days or last week or so. It's because I've been playing this new thing. Over the last three, four days or so, and I have my thoughts, my opinions, the facts and the ins and outs of what the game is all about. I have some notes here which I'll be going through with you. Uh, these notes I made as my thoughts were I don't know, happening or as I experienced the things that I wrote down. I, so it's like fresh. It was in the moment. So yeah, yeah, it's just authentic. It's just real. If you're going to enjoy the video, drop a like and maybe consider subscribing. Yeah, we will be back with the Man United career mode in two days or so. We'll be back. Just want to, you know, making some plans moving forward for what's coming up next. What will be the next career mode save? so on and so forth. But yeah, don't worry. Don't worry. We'll be back soon enough. So let's get into it. I think we'll start off with the visuals first. Firstly, the cutscenes and the build-ups and all those kind of stuff. They're amazing. I'll be honest. When I first saw it, I was like, well, this is a bit ridiculous because it has like fans on the outside, fans going into the stadium, build-ups, all kinds of stuff. The, the, I don't know what they're called, the stewards or I don't know, the people that manage the pitch, preparing for the game, all kinds of stuff. There's a lot of cutscenes, there's a lot of different types of cutscenes for derbies, for specific moments throughout the game and throughout career mode yeah there's a lot of them and they're impressive they just make the experience much better much more alive which is great and the camera angles are different they are new ones for on the pitch stuff so such things such as fouls uh well i was gonna say free kicks like set pieces in general there are like on pitch cameras which at some point make the game feel a bit strange like you like the angle of the camera would suddenly change while you're playing the game and it's a bit like well what's happening there but yeah it basically means there's a foul advantage played things like these it takes getting used to because at, at a time it's like oh, it's a bit too much but it makes it fun in the end then there's the pitch itself they have this whole thing of they're making the pitch more alive and i'll be honest it is it looks more impressive especially at the beginning of games you can see the grass is in 3d um, the crowds are also much more impressive, they are more alive, there's more variety in the crowd, so it's not like the same person every second guy. Um, the crowds are more involved at goals, the ambience has been enhanced, the chants in certain stadiums are more involved, like you can feel like when a team is building momentum, you can feel the crowd get into it. If you're like a goal down and you score an equalizing towards the end of the game, you can feel the crowd really get into it. Um, yeah, there's a lot going on there and the pitch itself, the whole thing of if you make a sliding tackle, you can see the grass go out and then there's like a mud stain there. It's fun at first, but it gets ridiculous at points because you can see the pitch just is in, in an absolute mess by the end of the game. And that never happens in real life. That never happens when you just see like lines of mud all over the pitch. I feel like that's a bit overdone. But if you look past that, the pitches are pretty impressive. Now, their gameplay itself. Firstly, set pieces. They're interesting. Um, at first, they seem very difficult, but they're definitely going to be more difficult for casual gamers, for people who are not really football fans or are really or play football in general, because when you strike a ball, right, at a free kick, you essentially select where exactly on the football itself you're going to hit it. So obviously, if you hit it towards the bottom of the ball, there's, there's going to be more lift to it. If you hit it towards the middle, it's going to be more of a knuckle ball. You select uh, if you're going to hit it with like an in-swing or an out-swing or depending on the foot of the player that's hitting it as well. It can be overwhelming, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's actually more fun. It's actually more fun. It gives you more variety on set pieces, direct free kicks as well. Penalties are... I feel like they're a bit more simplified because that doesn't exist on penalties. It's only on free kicks and corners. But on penalties, I still really don't understand how it works because it's essentially, it's essentially you wait for the timer to go green. It goes from like green to yellow to red. And then you just wait for it to go green. Then you press the shoot button and then you select a side. But there's no indicator on where exactly you're putting the pen. So you can only select a side and the power. So... Yeah, there's much less control on those unless I just don't know how it works yet. 
Now more on the gameplay. Ah, uh, mate, how do I explain this? I feel like EA are caught between making this a football simulation game and making it an arcade game. Because things such as the high promotion stuff, you can see that that's more simulation, right? They're trying to make it more realistic. The touches on the ball, they look more authentic. However, the game is played at such a high pace that there are a lot of glitches because no real footballer moves that quick or makes touches that quick. So for example, one thing that I've noticed that they've really worked on is like the first touch. That's like a big, big deal. So if you're passing the ball towards a player and you're essentially directing where you want the first touch to be, like if you're moving it towards the right, it'll maybe take a touch on their left foot towards their right foot. Or if you're sprinting and flick it right, they'll take a first touch ahead of them towards the right. And it looks good up until the glitches start to kick in, right? Like if you're passing the ball around your center backs and there's no pressure on them, fine. It looks great. It looks amazing. You can see the animations are updated. There are more animations and it looks like a sim game. But when they start dribbling towards your fullback and it's one-on-one -on -one situations or it's in midfield where there's a lot of players involved, there are a lot of glitches. There's a point where players will be dribbling on the ball and the ball's behind him. And it's kind of like you can't win the ball because he is dribbling, but the ball's behind him. And there's a lot of that. Honestly, my first impression, it's a bit extreme, but my first impression after the first maybe 5-10 games of playing this was like, this is the worst FIFA gameplay I have ever played. I'll be honest. It's frustrating. It's frustrating. It's at point it's too slow, at point it's too quick. It's very inconsistent. Maybe it's because it's a it's a it's basically a demo, it's a beta, it's, you know, it's not the full game, but there are many, many parts of the full game. And things such as gameplay, I don't think it really changes with an update because it's more of the engine and the hypermotion stuff, it's not really gonna change. So it's gonna take some getting used to. It's gonna take, well, I guess in my case, cause I play mostly offline, maybe using some sliders, I've been testing some as well, to try to desperately help this game because bro, it's not good. It's really not good. Other things I have noticed is it's more difficult to dribble past defenders. It somehow is easier to play past them like with passes, like play past a team with passes, but it's more difficult to dribble past a defender one-on-one. -on -one. And that could be a defender, that could be a midfielder. It's much more difficult because again, there's emphasis on that whole first touch thing where your, like any touch really, not just your first touch, but any touch is very important. Because if you flick a, well, if you flick the stick, towards the left and then towards the right. He's gonna take a touch towards the left and towards the right. So if that first touch towards the left isn't on point, you're gonna lose the ball every time. Um, you can see the difference with playing with high quality dribblers and players who can't really dribble because you can see the speed of the dribbling, you can see the control, the close control. So stats such as ball control and dribbling are very important if you want players who can beat a man. Um, defenders are also, well, the quick defenders are fucking quick, bro. I can't lie. I can't lie. Like you can be through on goal and then my man's just going to close like a 10 yard gap. So <laughs> that's what I'm saying. At some point of the game, pace is overpowered. But then again, at some point, it's it's like undervalued because if you're through on goal, there's no way. And if you're well, a relatively quick attacker, there's no way a defender that's 10 yards behind you should be catching you because they have to accelerate while you are already sprinting. But that happens. Now the team AI or your user AI, you know, basically your teammates. Yeah. If you're not controlling them, especially defensively, they're useless. They are absolutely useless. They don't track runners, uh, especially runners from midfield. So one thing I noticed is I am always conceding goals against midfielders instead of attackers because I keep my defensive line relatively good. You know, I am very good at like jockeying players and stuff, but if they are making runs from midfield and my midfielders are not tracking their runs, I can't really do anything about that. And that happens in almost every game. In almost every game, foot, I mean, fullbacks are overlapping. They're basically isolating your fullback in 2v1 situations and your winger just never tracks back. He just never does. So that's like, they score the same goals. It's very repetitive. It's always playing it out wide, then cutting it inside, then there's a runner from midfield, and then they score because your midfielders are literally just standing there watching him run through. I have hope that that's something they can update with the, with update, I mean, they can fix with updates, is what I meant to say. 
but as of now it's it's pretty bad i've tried some sliders um the one option that i've tried the most that it seems to work well relatively well is the line length if you reduce that it reduces the gap between your midfield line and your defensive line which you know that half space in there is reduced which means there's less room for that to happen but bro you're basically compensating for what ea have made and you're not really gonna fix all that much but like i said there are many animations that have been added especially to the goalkeepers as well um they make different kinds of saves they still have those moments where the keeper is diving but then he retracts his hand and the ball goes through <sighs> it's frustrating um but yeah they have added many more animations which make the game it just looks better like what i'll say is the game looks better like if you were watching the game or watching someone else play it looks amazing it looks fun up until you play it and you realize that the players just don't do what you want them to do the ai is useless um it's difficult to beat defenders like i've said the passing is a bit too easy because the opposition midfield doesn't track runners either you know um i've had to make certain adjustments again to make the game more challenging in terms of a passing perspective such as passing with like manual passing instead of assisted or semi-assisted to just make it more difficult bro because you can just ping it one time passing throughout the team even on legendary difficulty and just pass through the whole team and make it to the other side and score goals so i hope they somehow make it more challenging now i've also tried career mode a bit um a lot of features added and one feature that i have liked that i actually didn't realize was going to be added is the whole real managers thing where you can play as a real manager essentially play at any club as a real manager and that's a good thing for me because i don't know i've been doing that for a while but i've always had to create the manager and it has taken me like a while to create the manager you know look up pictures look up ways to create the manager so that's very good it's very good the real managers are in the game not all of them but that's because maybe it's just the beta, right? Maybe they'll add more of them because as an example, the Juventus manager, Maximiliano Allegri, is not in the game. Um, so maybe they'll be added. The game, well, Juventus, the team are in the game. That's if you don't know the real team. I assume the real stadium will be. It's not in the game as of yet, but I'm sure it will be by the time the game launches or with a later update or something. Um, but yeah, not all the managers are in the game, but there are many managers in the game um even for leagues that aren't even licensed right like fucking saudi arabian league you know all the managers are there uh i don't know if they're the real ones though because i don't know any manager there but they are names and then there are pictures others don't have pictures but yeah yeah you can essentially play as a real manager bro and in career mode itself well transfers are a bit different uh yeah the budget is a bit different as well well, that's sort of the budget. The budget cannot be adjusted, bro. You can't adjust it between the wage or transfer budget. It's fixed, right? So if your wage budget is done, you're fucked, essentially. <laughs> it's gone. Or if your transfer budget is done, you'll have a wage budget, but not a transfer budget, which is a bit strange. But yeah, transfer fees, the AI, even with strict negotiations, which is what I always use, they are more reasonable. They are more reasonable with their prices it's not completely overblown sometimes they'll just be ridiculous so i really do think the ai takes into consideration like contract lengths of players i really think so because certain times they'll just want like an insane amount of money which is overpricing the player and they'll just not budge at all but then at other times they'll still be a good player but then they'll take like a like quite a cut like if a player's value is 25 million and they have two years left they'll take like 15 Whereas if a player has like four years left and their value is 30, they'll want like 50, 55. It's something I've realized. So yeah. And then on top of that, after making transfers, there's like a rating now that you get. Basically from like, a, it's an assistant manager or some sort of board member that oversees transfers. They basically look into your transfer. They give you a rating and then they give you like a report on like, okay, you could have saved this much money or you did well because you have saved this much money on this transfer maybe it's like a, okay this is a position we desperately needed or you could have spent money on a different position because you know so then they give you like a rating between like an a and an f and i don't really know what that means because it doesn't seem to affect uh basically how close you are to being sacked i don't know maybe at some point it does i haven't played any career mode very deep or anything i've just like tried the new features out but yeah, there's a rating essentially for every transfer you make, which is kind of cool. And there are new cutscenes after signing a player. So 
there's a lot of them. There's a lot of different ones. I didn't want to go through every one of them because, you know, I like the, I'd like to save some for the future for me to see for the first time as well. Um, but I saw the uh, cutscenes, so like if you sign a player, you, he'll be there coming in, have his medical. It'll show the player having the medical, signing the contract. I presume if it's a big signing, they'll be unveiled. I think I've heard something about that, but I haven't seen it because I haven't done anything of the sort. Um, also, if you sell a player, you'll see a player leaving, kind of looking a bit depressed. But <laughs> yeah, you'll see a player leaving with their bags and everything and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, you also get ratings for selling players as well, like in terms of, oh, you should not have sold them, you should have sold them, kind of money thing as well. So yeah. Aside from that, it's just cosmetic stuff such as the menus in career mode being different. It takes a while to navigate. I mean, obviously you would prefer the older ones because change is a bit, you know, it takes a while to get used to it. But yeah, it doesn't really change much. Not much has been added. I haven't tried the player career mode. I've only done the manager career mode. I presume there are new features in player career mode. Maybe I'll try it this year. I have never played player career mode, to be honest. Maybe we'll try it. Maybe not. I'll see what happens there. Let me know if you want me to do that. But yeah, aside from that, regarding gameplay in career mode, I've noticed that instructions and tactics are more important. And that for me is a good thing because I like my tactics, bro. Yeah, I like going out there, setting out a team a certain way, them following that and that leading to a win. Although maybe you're facing like a, a tougher team that you should not be beating your tactics lead you to a win. That happens. That happens. Tactics are very important. And the AI adjust tactics quite a lot as well. I haven't seen them change formations as such, but I've seen them make some interesting substitutions like taking off a defensive midfielder for a winger and stuff. Like if you go into the menus and check their formation, it still looks the same, but then looking at the field and how they're playing, you can tell that they change something, which makes it interesting. There are points in games where you feel changes in momentum as well, where towards the end you feel like, yeah, we're really hanging on here for the win or something. I don't know if that's like the scripting people talk about that like, yeah, FIFA is scripted to some degree. I don't know if that's the case, but yeah, there's quite a few late goals to be honest. Quite a few late goals either way um but yeah that should make more drama in it so maybe that's a good thing i also tried playing with competitor mode and the player based difficulty thing on yeah it's ridiculous bro it's ridiculous i thought that maybe they would have updated it by now because i think competitor mode has been there since fifa 21 i think but it's still the same it's still crap yeah just simply put it's not good the player based difficulty as well you try it like it's just not realistic, bro. Like, if you just are playing FIFA for the sake of having a challenge, yeah, go on, have it on, yeah? But if you're playing it to try to have a challenge but also have a realistic game, yeah, it's not for you. It's not for you. It's not worth it. So, yeah, I realize I've kind of been <laughs> all over the place with the points. Kind of had points for career mode and gameplay, but yeah, fuck it, bro. We're here in it. So, yeah, that's basically it up until now. That's what I can say. I'm obviously still going to be playing it and we'll give you an update. There's actually an update that released today on the, the beta uh and that to be honest has improved certain things there are fewer glitches with the whole touches and dribbling thing there are fewer glitches but they're still there there's still way too many bro like before it was borderline unplayable that's me saying it's the worst gameplay in fifa i've ever played right now it's still pretty bad it's still pretty bad bro it's still pretty bad. i'll probably never get a beta code again but it's still pretty bad um but it's playable, it's playable with some sliders, you know, trying to slow down the game a bit, fixing things, trying to change things up a bit. Yeah, it's playable to a degree, but it's not great. Really hoping there will be more updates, well, or at least some sort of changes towards the full game launch next month. Hoping so, but at the moment, it's not great. I think the beta is running up until the 1st of September. So if there's anything specific that you want to know or you want me to test out, let me know and then I'll do just that and I'll let you guys know. Like I said, I will be back, yeah, with the Man United career mode. We'll be back with that stressful, stressful save. Yeah, we'll get that done. I think I'll be playing one more season at least with that. Hopefully we can get into the top four on that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Check it out if you haven't. Drop a like on the video if you have enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts in the comments if you agree with what I've said because there are certain parts which are my opinions but there are certain parts which are just real and is what's happening let me know your thoughts in the comments drop a like on the video if you have enjoyed please consider subscribing I would greatly appreciate that I've been Quitty Crusher I'll see you guys next time